can you talk a little bit about filming the last scene, you know, Betty and Jughead watching this video and then the video itself, which is yeah. super creepy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I ended up, so, um, you know, those voyeur tapes, some of them have already been established in other episodes. Yeah. But this one I got to, to film and I felt a, a big responsibility because, you know, it's not only upping the stake yeah. in the tapes, um, but you know, it's like, it's now going to establish what's going to happen from this point forward. So I wanted to make sure that we got it right. So I kept checking in with Roberto, um, just making sure. And then also, you know, I wanted to push the violence, uh, aspect of it. Yeah. Be, but also you have to be conscious of what, where it airs and what your, the age of your audience and what's appropriate and all that kind of stuff. So there was a lot of like rules that we had to abide by that the network sets out and the yeah. studio sets out and standards and practices and stuff. But thankfully what I had designed that I thought was truthfully the creepiest ended up fitting within the guidelines of what the network was comfortable with. So mm. luckily we didn't have to compromise anything in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I just kept, I kept saying, uh, is this real or not real? Or what are you doing here? You know? Right? <laughs> um, and that's always going to be a gray area with Roberto and with the storytelling. But I wanted to depict it like, like, uh, yeah, they've upped the game. Yeah, it's uh, chilling. Something, something really happens. Yeah. <laughs> and not also, time. Hmm? Sorry. Not just a reenactment this time. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, are we going to find out maybe who is, or I guess is that the next mystery is, you know, who is underneath that mask in the middle? <laughs> I know, right? So who's pulling the strings and mm -hmm. also who are... Now, when the show does return, obviously plans are shifting. You know, no one yeah. knows what's happening when. I know there was initially talk of a time jump, but do you think they're going to finish this storyline in this timeline when the show returns? In you your know, opinion? I, yeah. <laughs> I, guess. I, I don't know. First of all, I never know what they have planned. I think they do. Um, yeah. it, but I, I mean, I could only imagine it's like we were working toward prom. We were working toward yeah. graduation. It was going to like, you know, uh, sum up the fourth year of high school for Riverdale that's obviously now been pushed to a later date. So I'm only assuming that they're going to, you know, deal with that in the next season. Yeah. Um, but how long like the history was going to happen? I, I don't know, <laughs> you know, and what was in store for Alice, you know, and Alice and FP and yeah. what was happening. So that's the thing. There's, there's a lot of speculation about time jumps and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I know that the writers are very active and making lots of, <laughs> Hands. If only I could be a fly on the wall. <laughs> right. That's the next <laughs> room you need to get in on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now, you know, we know Skeet is leaving the show, um, Marisol as well. Do you yeah. think there is hope for a happy existence for Phallus, even if he is not physically on the show? <laughs> well, I mean, I always sort of say jokingly, but not jokingly, is that there are a lot of characters that we lose for whatever reasons, right? Yeah. Like people leave town or, you know, people are murdered or, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, 